Yellow. I am on the line with the realest Yankees fan on earth, the Salmon 80 source. How's it going, Peter? It's going wonderful. The realest guy is in the it's room. Just a, it's, just an, it's just another day in the life, baby. Come on. Stop. So let's get right into it. Sonny Gray has bombed yet again. Where do you Woo. see the Yankees headed with Sonny Gray? Do they trade him? Do they send him to the bullpen? What, what, what happens with Sonny Gray? Well, um, I love Aaron Boone, but my God, I mean, they they go ahead and they they come out and say, yeah, it's a bit concerning, but he'll make his next start in Baltimore. I mean, and and he even went as far as saying he don't know if they have many other options that are better. I could probably name you a good four off the top of my head because at the end of the day, you know, I, I was a believer of Sonny Gray. I was a, I was a big fan of Sonny Gray. I thought he'd come here and be halfway decent or good. For multiple years, that's not the case. Yeah, I, I, I wrote it in a tweet. I can't see him lasting much longer. I just can't. At, at this point, it's not a it's not a uh, stuff thing. It's all mental at this point. It's pretty obvious. He, he can't pitch in this type of, you know, he, at first it was the personal catcher. You know, th- that's one of those first signs. And, and now it's just Yankee Stadium he can't pitch in. And I think now it's just eating away at him that he that he can't get a good performance in. And you know, for for the Yankees, uh, I understand Boone as a manager. You you got to kind of soften the blow, but I mean, you got a kid in AAA, Justice Sheffield, who, who who's hot as hell. You know, going to be pitching in the in the uh, in the futures game. A better option. I mean, David Hale, uh, uh, AJ Cole, or Siga, Harman. You know, um, uh, Tanaka coming back. They, they got many other options. And right now, this is a team that is fighting with the Red Sox. You said it. I never thought so. I didn't think they'd be fighting with the Red Sox at this point. I thought they'd be well ahead of the Red Sox at this point, and, and it would it would be a joke. But you got to make your mind up. I mean, I, we know Cashman's going to make deals. But, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't hesitate at all to put Gray in a deal and attach him to something. I really wouldn't. Exactly. I'll ship him off to a National League team, obviously. Let me tell you something, honestly. Some people will be against this move. But I would do great for Matt Harvey. Yeah. I, I really would. And it makes sense because uh, Sonny Gray has one more year on his uh, contract or whatever. Exactly. Uh, and, and hey, look, I'm not a fan of Matt Harvey. I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of Matt Harvey, but anybody at this point would be an improvement on what Gray has given him. Yeah, at this point, I see the Yankees uh, trading for minutes. two other pitchers. I see the Yankees obtaining two pitchers. They have to. At this point, you almost think they have to. Exactly, and um, you and everybody else that has been following com saw that I wasn't a big Sonny Gray fan. I called it way back in July 2017, and I'm calling yeah. something again. If the Yankees trade Andahor over Sanchez, in my opinion, that's going to be a bad move just for the simple fact that Andahor puts in work. Andahor appreciates the fact that he's a New York Yankee, and I'm saying if, if it's a choice between the two, I'll trade Sanchez for an ace. But you know, if you if you heard, I, I forgot what video it was that I put out recently, but I flat out said in it. Excuse me, I flat out said it's at this point. If if somebody told me in the off season, hey, you know, would you consider dealing Sanchez? I would have been hell no. You know, no way. You don't. No way. There's nobody out there that you look to deal him. But with the consistency now of the negativity. That, you know, A-Rod has said, Alan Cockrell has said, Aaron Boone. I've never heard a manager say that they hope their player is uh, is focused on conditioning. Let's put it like this. Let's put it like this. If George Steinbrenner was still around, Gary Sanchez would have been traded a long time ago. Oh, it's very, that's very possible. But I, I agree with you. I mean, no, no, no question about it. I would not, I would prefer to trade Sanchez over Andrew Hart. Exactly. And it doesn't have to do with talent. It has to do with Gary Sanchez taking – for granted that he's a New York Yankee. Hands down, hands down, and you know, you know, that's what I think. You remember because I, I made these videos a lot when when guys like on the Yes Network and David Cohn and Jack Curry and these guys were were just sticking up for Sanchez like it was like it was a bad thing to do and just telling the truth. I mean, you had these guys defending arguably one of the worst defensive catchers I've ever seen this year. It was hard to find a worse defensive catcher. And I don't care what stats you look at, pass the eye test. The Yankees' starting rotation had the most wild pitches. That wasn't necessarily because of the, the, the pitchers. 
Gary Sanchez likely has should have about 15 to 16 uh, pass balls this year instead of the nine or ten that he has. I mean, and it's I don't so easy, exactly. As, as a defensive catcher, and it's so easy as a professional athlete to look after your weight. Obviously, he has it, so that's the easiest part, and he hasn't done that. Oh, hands down. When you got strength and conditioning coaches, you got uh, people that make you food. I mean, you got everything up and down that can help you. And you heard, you know, uh, uh, Joe Girardi said it before that conditioning is going to be a thing for him. Um, you know, A Rod. I remember that 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 uh, I forgot what game it was. But I think it was a Sunday night game when you just heard A. I think A Rod might have repeated it three or four times about flat out conditioning. His conditioning needs to be better. You know, we know Alan Cockrell flat out said he's a lazy ball player. Flat out said it that he's one of the laziest guys he ever seen. I mean, and now you have Aaron Boone, the, the acting manager, saying that while he's on the DL. So yeah, I mean. I would no question about it deal Gary Sanchez before I deal a lot of the young talent on the Yankee roster, hands down, because at the end of the day, look, the hope is there. I get it. Gary Sanchez could be a hell of a hitter, but if he cannot be a catcher, he's not valuable to this team. And I've tried to tell people that, but his value comes as as being a power-hitting catcher, not at being a DH. That's not valuable to the Yankees. And at the end of the day, he's a just distraction with his uh, conditioning and just being called down all the time. Yeah, it's not good. It, it's not a good sight. And, you know, the Yankees got a couple of these guys. Look, at the end of the day, not every prospect works, and we know that. And I'm not saying that Gary won't come back and be excellent. Hell, look, if the Yankees traded him for the Grom, I'm not saying he may not become an MVP candidate in the National League because he very well may. Exactly. But at the end of the day – at the end of the day, and in and, and one of my recent videos, I even spoke about this. It's more valuable right now that the Yankees can get somebody that is an ace like Severino to put at the top of their rotation than have a catcher that you're worried about, hey, he could be this great, but we're worried about him gaining 30 pounds. Exactly. And who would you obtain after trading, let's say, a Sanchez? Who, do you, who would you want the Yankees to obtain as a catcher? <laughs> Well, I mean, there's definitely options out there. I mean, there definitely is. You know, like you spoke about JT Real Muto, who, you know, at the end of the day is going to cost a ton. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a, one of the main reasons why, you know, the Astros and the Braves haven't dealt for him yet because of the asking price of, of Jeter's Marlins. So at the end of the day, I mean, uh, Ramos right now, we just saw him, Wilson Ramos. He's going to be the starter of, uh, of the All-Star game at, at catcher. Yeah. And you know what I mean? I mean, the Rays are going to have to deal them. They know they got to deal them. Look, I- I'm not. I'm not saying that all these things are going to happen. We're not saying that. But at the end of the day, uh, the-, the way I value a ball club is you got to see it this way. The- it- it's it's not the easiest thing in the world to develop the Severino. We haven't seen the Yankees do it. And and how long? I don't know. You can't. Yes. I wouldn't even put a-, a guy like Pettit in that category. Exactly. You know, this is an elite starting Sebi, pitcher. Exactly, Sevy's like um, Sevy's like a Clemens on the mound when he was in his prime. Exactly, like a young, he's like a young Doug Gooden. Yep. I mean, and and, and and that's exactly like what he is. Day. You don't develop pieces like that. So for me, the value of adding a Degrom, then the potential of getting Corbin in the off season, and having just a dominating rotation for the next two or three years, is so much more valuable then depending on the hope that your catcher will lose some damn weight and play to his potential. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, and it I'm comes just, down to... I'm just being exactly. honest because you're right when you said, look, you work out, I work out. You know, I, I've, I've, people who don't know me, I've lost 70 pounds, 70, 70 pounds. I'm not a professional athlete. But at the end of the day, I, I, I think it's almost sad that we have to have these conversations exactly. as fans. <clears throat> about a major league young, not a veteran, not a guy who's been around for 10, 12 years, a young catcher who obviously can't maintain his weight. And it comes down to... It comes down to he's a Yankee and he should act like a Yankee. I agree. I agree. And he should he should take it. He should take... And you could tell. You can tell guys like Torres. You could tell guys that you said like Andujar. These guys are so grateful for the opportunity exactly. they have. You can see it all day. To the fact of, of just little things like saying, hey, look, I got my translator with me. 
But I'm going to learn to speak English, and I'm going to speak it right now in interviews. I, w- I want to do it. Exactly. You know, that's what I've Jackson hasn't well. even learned English. I mean, exactly. I'm not knocking him because yep. there's guys in this country and people that have been here forever that don't speak English. But at the end of the day, it, it shows a different type of character. Exactly. So, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Sonny, Sonny Gray is a train wreck. You were, you were 100% spot on. You called it. I remember. I mean, I probably still got the messages somewhere. Yeah. Of when you flat out said whoever gets Verland is going to win the World Series, and the Astros won the World Series, and me and you had our back and forth because I I honestly believed I said man a good pickup for the Yankees in Gray, but you know you called it no question about it, and I mean he has been and nobody predicted this bad, you know I, I predicted a mid three ERA every year maybe high threes more home runs we know because of the Yankee Stadium, but. To be close to the All Star break, right here, basically, and have a six ERA, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's it's almost pathetic. Do you think that uh, rumor about the Yankees being interested in Mustakas is that real or what? You know, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a video on that. Um, I'm I'm hopefully gonna hear some more information, but at the end of the day, I, I just don't. I, there's a couple of reasons why I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see it either. You know. And, and I, I, I'm looking at it as just, again, I like to look at things as just a baseball person, not as a fan of the Yankees. Because anybody with, you know, Moustakis is a, is a pretty decent player, but he's, he's overrated. And I'm just being honest. Moustakis is an overrated ball player. He can't walk at all. His on-base percentage is what, 312? It's extremely low. Um, Greg Bird has been bad, but they almost got comparable numbers in, in certain categories, which is kind of scary. Like a, a hard hit rate, fly ball rate, which is, which is kind of shocking. But at the end of the day, you got to think about it too. You're going to move a third baseman to first base. We don't know how that's going to work out. Yeah, he's probably going to hit a few more homers, but is it worth whatever prospects it might take to get him? Here's a little now, conspiracy. Talk- there- yeah, here's a little conspiracy theory, real quick. I think if the Yankees have some sort of dialogue with the Nationals, even if it's not true, it'll add more pressure to the Mets to deal with the ground. Oh, no question. I mean, the Yankees should do everything they can. And and at the end of the day, I mean, really at the end of the day, it. it I, I read a good article too. I, I forgot who wrote it. I would like to give him credit, but I forgot who wrote it. But he was basically saying that the time is now for the Mets to make these deals. When they came out recently and said, "No, we're not. We're interested in trading Matt and Wheeler." Uh, excuse me, but who gives a shit about Matt and Wheeler? <laughs> Let's be honest. Exactly. When you're looking to rebuild a team, Matt and Wheeler isn't rebuilding that team. And like you know, I said, the, the like I idea. said, yeah, and like I said, if you like have some hints about, yeah, let's see if the Yankees go after Max Scherzer if the Nationals fall off, it might just Correct. add pressure to the Mets to deal Degrom because we all know the Nationals and the Mets have a little thing going back and oh, forth. Yeah. And if the Nationals rebuild before the Mets, I mean, that looks pretty bad for the Mets. Oh yeah, no, no question about it. And I mean, really, for uh, the the Mets. The time is now. I mean, if you're just looking at it as a baseball fan, trading a guy like DeGrom, and you can look at any type of package you're looking at. The one I always bring up is just a simple one. It's, you know, off the top of my head, you got Frazier, maybe even you throw Drury in there, Sheffield, Abreu, and Floriel. These are five guys that are going to be helping you within the next two years tops, maybe sooner. Three of those guys are helping you instantly. This is something the Mets don't have. Like somebody was saying the other day, I think somebody was kind of debating me on a chat, and I flat out said, who on the Mets is young? What young talent do they have coming up? They don't have any. So even as a as just an educated baseball fan, the time is definitely now. And, you know, you said it, I've said it. The Yankees need a top-line guy. Enough with the little rollovers. Enough with the... You know, let's try to plug this in for now. Enough with those yeah, types of enough with that, man. Jaime Garcia said Gray was just a disaster last year. Exactly. And, and prospects are prospects. They're as simple as that. We're I mean, if the, Mets that don't, if the Mets don't want Sheffield at this point, they're a pretty lousy organization. Oh, we know that. I mean, that we know already. For, for them to even come out, and again, this is more than likely them just, you know, just, just uh, uh, throwing some smoke out there and saying, nah, we're not interested in dealing them because maybe they haven't gotten what they expected to, to hear back on uh, on initial conversations with teams like the Yankees and others. But, I mean, hands down, 
No question about it. If you're Brian Cashman, and this is the other thing, too. Cashman got some pressure on him. There's no yeah. doubt about it. I mean, the, the starting staff has put pressure on Cashman to make a deal. And also, he has all the chips, so if he can't capitalize on having all and, these and, prospects to trade, I mean... Yep, and that is that is exactly where I was just about to go to. When you got the prospect pool that the Yankees have, we know that some of these guys will work, we know some of them won't. But they are so deep with such a young team at the major league level that they have the better opportunity than anybody to take a hit on their prospect pool. And they should. For a guy like DeGrom, everybody is open in the conversation. Now, Torres, I don't deal, and I'd be very reluctant to deal Andahar. Yeah. But at the end of the day, anybody should open a, a conversation up, and you should be able to sit down and make a deal. Will the Wilpon sign off on a deal with the Yankees? I don't know. I think that would be the last straw. Who the hell and, knows? And this is why I like the, the angle of the Nationals. If you have some sort of dialogue with the Nationals that they fall off a bit, they'll really add pressure to the Mets, like I said. No, that's true. That, that's definitely true. And, I mean, Nationals got other pieces. You know, Scherzer would be unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I can't – I just can't see something like that happening. But, um, you know, Gio Gonzalez is also there who's been good, not not a favorite of mine. But, like you said, you're right. You can you can always target the Mets and go, hey, look, well, we could have a deal in place with a Gonzalez. Exactly. It'll, 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 it'll be like this. Look, if you don't want our prospects, we'll talk to the Nationals. Maybe they'll take our prospects, and the Mets will look like fools. Yeah, flat out. You know, uh, Rizzo is is a smart GM. You know, he's probably much smarter than what the Mets have. And, you know, we'll strike a deal there if you don't want to do it. But, you know, um, the the Mets are uh, – I almost have to I, – I hate saying it because I almost feel like i got to see it to believe it. But there's so many different ways that the Yankees and the Mets really match up well. Jay haps another good one that uh, as long as it doesn't cost a ton – because that's the thing, too. I understand the prospect pool is real, but you also don't want to give up your solid talent for a guy that's going to be half of the year. Yeah. You know, you, you want to give up those mid-tier guys. So for the Yankees, to me, I mean, cash is on the spot. If if the Grom is available, which you got to believe he is, you got to make every – Move in the world to make that happen. Yeah, it's a no-brainer. It I mean, if, yeah, if, he's, he, if maybe supposedly if he's off the table now, you keep being consistent and keep going back to the Mets and saying, "Hey, hey, I want this guy. I want this guy." Yeah, and I mean, even if it's like you you brought up a long time ago, and I've talked about here recently, even if the Mets say, "Look, is Gary Sanchez on the table?" You you can't say no to that if you're the Yankees. You can't. Exactly. You can't because there's so the many exactly. There's so, so many options value. exactly. Right as of now, there's so many options to replace Sanchez with. You, the Yankees can get any catcher that they want. Yeah, I mean, no question, no question about it. And, and you know, Ramos is also a free agent in the off season. So exactly. at the end of the day, if you were able to trade for Ramos, you got your catcher for the next couple of years. And the Yankees and have you know, so many prospects now that they drafted a whole bunch of uh, catchers. Yeah, and I mean, look, and look, and, and I, I always mention this, too, because, you know, you a lot of Yankee fans, you hurt their feelings. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> One thing I learned about Twitter, Twitter's a mad world. So you got you got a lot of these Yankee fans who, you know, you bring up the idea that, hey, look, I'm just telling you the truth about Sanchez. They're like, and they oh, feel like, what are you doing? Oh, my God. Oh, they they start blood, crying. Man. You know, they, they, they poop their pants. You know, they, they start scratching their keyboard. I mean, it's a, it's a bunch it, of crazy yeah, things. It's like a little, it's, they're like they act like little kids in a candy store. You can't oh, parents no, can't no buy them candy. They, they, they throw a little fit. Oh yeah, they block you. They don't want to talk to you no more. They say, "How dare you? You're a Red Sox." That guy want to accuse me of being a Red Sox fan because <laughs> I talked about Gary Sanchez. I mean, stop. Exactly. You know, so I mean, it, it's funny though because you know you people automatically jump at you when you say, "Look, here's the truth about Gary Sanchez right now." You know, I. I I, I talked about recently how the Yankees' ownership is obviously unhappy with him, you know, and, and people jump down my throat. But look, it's as, it's as simple as this. He's not the guy the Yankees expected. One and done. That's it. That's all you need to know. Exactly. And people will bring up, oh, well, he hit the homers. Cool, I get it. He hit the homers. He's also one of the worst offensive catchers I've ever seen. They talk about his arm. He was catching nobody this year. Off the top of my head, I think he might have been at 17%, something along those lines. He was catching nobody. He, he, I say it all the time. 
for young players, you look for progression. Gary Sanchez's season, the one word is regression. That's the best word for Gary Sanchez this year is regression. And if you could get a guy like DeGrom that's going to help you for the next multiple years, you do it. So, um, Peter, people don't know this, but you've been doing this since 2005. All these people on Twitter don't realize that we just hopped on on Twitter, YouTube. They all went insane when you started to predict stuff and it became true. But um, let's talk about the haters of the Salmonetti source. Jack Curry retweeted you or something, tweeted at you, and you caused a ruckus. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. But it's like I said in my video, you know, um, it, it was silly, too, because it's only about a Tyler Wade call. So, I mean, that's like the least of the things I've said. <laughs> but, but, you know, that's the one that um, that Curry went ahead and, and you know, just, just basically said, that, you know, give Simon any uh, source props, so on and so forth, for um, for being the first one to, to, to put the news out there. Um, and, yeah, I mean – yeah, it was basically yeah, I was nothing. Getting, and I was all these people, from people yeah. saying, "Hey, like, write your name up in the search and see what pops up." And like, there was, you know, it wasn't as much as early on. You know, yeah. there was probably earlier there was a ton of haters. Now it's like six or seven at one but cycle. Let's talk path about the. Who we really know yeah, about. Let's talk about where they're coming from, though. These so-called no names in Yankees universe—they're the ones that trigger that. They're the ones that send people to attack you. We can name names oh, yeah, right now if you want. Of course. I mean, at the end of the day, there's um, I, I forget there's that lady I spoke about. I forget what website she works for, but she works for one of these blogs. And I mean, I you're talking yes, about I think, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I, and she has to have. She got to be like you know. I, I'm not I'm not judging anybody, but she got to be. In a, she's an older woman. Put it that way. To be attacking people on Twitter and creating like seven different profiles yeah. to attack them from. That's, that's a form of insanity. I mean, I, I, you've told me about Twitter before. I'm new to it. So a lot of the stories I heard, I'm like, yeah, whatever. I mean, that stuff don't happen. Like, I'm not used to that mess. Like, then people would tell me about a burner account. I'm like, I don't even know what the hell a burner <laughs> account is. Apparently, all of my followers are me. <laughs> Apparently, all from what they say, every one of my followers are me. There was one guy, no joke. I forget who he, he's a follower of mine. He, he obviously likes me, talks nice about me all the time. But he was going back and forth. This one girl, like, hey, why do you hate on him for? Like, the guy's always been right, and you know, so on and so forth. And she flat out just said, "Oh, this is Simonetti source on a burner account." Wow. I'm like, this dude been on here since like May of like 2015. I literally just started. And what about like, that Max? Uh, what's his something. name? Max. What What's his last name? Uh, Wildstein, something like yeah, that. Yeah. I, I have no idea. It looks like a twelve-year-old boy. Yeah. Um, who, who's, who's? <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. But um, yeah. Those, those people are haters, didn't even, man. You know. Oh, obviously, didn't have the nerve to at me at all. Yeah. So you know, they they say things that people pass along to me that they said it. And you know, when I looked at his profile picture and, and, and just him in general, I say, you know what? There's, there's not even a point to. Yeah, those and I've noticed that on, on Twitter there. There's almost not even a point to go after some of these guys because yeah. the real Yankee fans and the real men or the real females that are that are fans, you know, they're just honest. You know, they, they don't they don't do these type of things. These are like the people that are truly mentally damaged. Yeah, yeah, they're mentally ill, insanity. Like it, it, uh, I've gotta, been telling you for a long time, like a long time. I've been doing this web stuff for a long time. You like once you get known on the web, you have a whole bunch of demented people trying to seek your attention, and people's told you just ignore them i mean you can't they're relentless you can't at that point yeah like when it when it becomes so many and then you'll have the ones that are that are flat out delusional like the guy yesterday um i forgot i man i forgot his name too um i think i retweeted it a couple of times because when when people do stuff like that i almost have to because he said something along the lines of oh this guy's been wrong all year and mlb writers have been right wow. so i'm like anybody who watched this all season I'm not knocking these guys, you know, uh, 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 John Morosi, you know, Ken Rosenthal, Buster Only, Sherman, all these guys, you know, Curry, they, they all do good work. You know, they're obviously where they are for a reason, not because they're slouches, but everybody gets things wrong, you know, and, and, and this guy was like, oh, he got everything wrong this off season. So I flat out said, hey, you know, I'm going to defend myself on certain things. And I just said, flat out, hey, uh, you know, let me know what I was wrong about, please, because I tell you the one I was wrong about, which was Cole. 
But then I was the, also the first one to say the Astros were interested and they're making a push to sign him. And they uh, trade for him, and they eventually did. In my opinion, so, you wasn't wrong with Cole. In the, you wasn't wrong with him. The Astros just took your idea and ran with it. That's what happened. Uh, um, definitely not at all. And if you remember, if you remember everything I said before on Cole when it came to just the rumors in general, the writers started saying the same exact thing. You're the one that created After, that trade in the first place. No question about it, hands down. And the funny thing is, though, this guy flat out said to me, this is how nut job some of these people are. He goes, well, there's no coming back from that. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, what? What do you mean? There's no oh, I know who that? you're talking about. Like, he he owns out. like a Yankees podcast or something, something like that. Yeah, this, this dude was literally like, you just got to cancel everything. And the funny thing is, and I gotta, I'm got i going to shout him out because we had our beats in the past. Yeah. But I appreciate John Boy. I yeah. do. Because at the end of the day, you know, he came out in the thing and was like, look, I don't know why you guys are putting beef between me and the guy. We had our thing in the past, so on and so forth. But congratulations to him. I'm happy he got his due. Exactly. You know, all you know, these big names the out here. Went back and forth. Yeah, all the big names out here, if we come together, we'll be the ultimate team. So that's the way to do it. It is no question a way to do it. But the one thing I have noticed, and, and, and you've said this too to me before, it's kind of weird that we've come on the scene, and, and obviously no, if any, if any person on Twitter won the offseason – it's NYY News and the Simonetti Tour. Yeah, yeah, for and, sure. I mean, He's... and this is not, I don't think this is us bragging. I think this is just being honest. I mean, hands down. It's not even, it's not even close. So came on like a bridge out of nowhere is, and everybody just was surprised That's exactly that. what it is. But the but thing they don't know is, the thing they don't know is that we've been around since 2005, so it was easily exactly. for us to, like, build it up. And let me, let me, let me shout out my man, Sal. You saw that yesterday. My man yeah. Sal remembered us yeah. back in 05. So that's crazy. So, you know, all the all the proof is in the pudding, like I said. People say, oh, show me, show me when you said this. I'm not going to – I don't have to show you. Look through the timeline. Look on the YouTube. Um, you know, you can match the dates up to when things actually happen. So it, it's all there, but it's just odd that typically the ones that are attacking are not your normal Yankee fans. It's the ones that have some sort of presence on Yankee Twitter yeah. or a blog. Yeah, exactly. That are the first ones that look to attack, which is kind of uh, uh, very odd because you would think instead of attacking, DM me and be, hey, look, you know, can I? Can let's we, work what, what can we do together? Yeah. Any exactly? Let's work together on something. Let's. And me and you, it's funny because the ones that knocked us will be the first ones to do something with them. Yeah, exactly. So that's the funny thing is like these guys want to knock, but. Like that's like if um if uh I don't know who who's not uh, Yanksco Yard for an example some of these guys on there have always like you know tried to shut us down for some reason <laughs> if these guys were ever like hey would you do a podcast or do it yeah no problem I don't care not, not a brag no. not, not a brag no yeah, exactly not a brag or anything but we created the Yankees blog atmosphere way back in 2005 nobody had that kind of website. Ever since well, hands, then, hands down, not, a whole not bunch even of close. clones have been popping up. If those sites realized that, they would even be attacking us. So, exactly. And I remember, man. I I remember breaking the uh, the the Gary Sheffield trade. If you remember that back in the yeah. day, I mean, uh, we we did things back then that you know interviewing Phil, it's funny. Hugh, interviewing Hughes, Phil Hughes, you interview, yeah. I mean, it's just leagues. it's just funny because because people don't people don't understand that it's like they don't see it or they don't want to see it and and their first thing is to attack. But I mean, we got a lot we got many busy days ahead of us here because this deadline got to be got to be crazy. We're, we're gonna have to see what happens. So just put it like this: we're just the realist in Yankees universe, period. And this is why people Hands like down. us. This is why people follow us. So before Hands we down. end this session. Where do you see the Yankees headed now that Sonny Gray bombed again? Do you see them making a move for a pitcher like a Hap, Harvey? Where do you see that going? Yeah, I mean, you, you almost you almost have to believe it. I mean, look, I, I brought up the idea of, of Harvey straight up for Gray almost as a joke, but I tell you what. It makes sense. I wouldn't be. It does make sense. And the reason why it makes sense is because the control years yeah. of Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray has the extra year next year that can help the Reds' rotation and help their rebuild because if he performs well, they could deal him next offseason. Exactly. So, or, or not next offseason, but at the deadline of next year. So it only helps them out. So at the end of the day, that, that trade is almost a win-win for uh, the Reds. 
But at the end of the day, would a guy like Cashman give up on the type of guy, on one of his deals? Yeah. You know, we've seen him hold on to these guys that he trades for with the hope that they prove him right. But as of now, I mean, you know, when I talk about Sanchez and things like that, I can see Sanchez making a rebound and being who we thought yeah, he was. Be, he'll, he'll, yeah, he'll definitely do it. Do a rebound. I'm just saying. We're just saying that um, he's not being a Yankee. He's on the Yankees. He's not acting. Yeah. And and my comparison to that is I cannot see Sonny Gray getting better. Exactly. And because at this point I gotta believe this is mental. Yep. And we've seen head cases in New York that just can't do it. I mean, he's the worst and of all so, time. Little. Um. This this is gonna go down as one of the worst trades, by the way. The Yankees have ever made. Oh man. And and the funny thing is, you know. Even, you know, you'll have a lot of people just flat out say, well, you know, at the end of the day, I wouldn't call it that because, you know, none of these guys that the Yankees trade have panned out to anything right now. But, but. He was supposed okay. to be an ace. Yeah, but at the end of the day, they were prospects. Yeah. So no. if a prospect doesn't pan out, that's okay. But you traded for a top line exactly. starting pitcher who became trash. So I don't care how you see it. You lost the deal. So what? I mean, we'll see. We'll see where they go. I mean, they have options. Put it that way. They have options. On my my one, my number one, no question about it, is Degrom. You do everything in your power to get that guy. No matter what it is, you go out there and try to get him. Um, other than that, we'll see what they do. But they need two starters. They need two starters. No question about it. We'll see what they do. Exactly. So this has been the Salmonetti Source. Check him out at Salmonetti Source on Twitter and YouTube. And YouTube. And YouTube. And YouTube.